Hello, everybody, and welcome to Open EXO Live. Uh, really great to be with you. Uh, evening for me or morning for you, wherever you are in the world. And uh, today we uh, have Daniel Marcos with us. Uh, Daniel is, I think, usually in Austin, but I believe he's in Mexico City uh, as we're speaking today. So, but before we get uh, Daniel up on up on up on screen, I did ask some community members just to share a few words uh, about Daniel, and so we'll share those now. First one comes from Pedro, and he just says, I'm a big fan of Daniel. Uh, he is one of the most motivated and knowledgeable people I know. He is also one of those people that is always thinking of ways to support you. He constantly shares things that have helped me on my journey as an entrepreneur. And next, uh, we have from Miguel. Uh, if you're looking for a person to give you a 360-degree perspective of your business, that is Daniel. He is a huge learner and he generously shares lots of information with everyone. Uh, he makes people grow in so many ways. I'm really happy to be close, uh, close to him. Uh, if you want to take your company to the next level, Daniel is the person you are looking for. Uh, next up comes from Marite. I admire Daniel very much for his ability to uh, always be updated, his abundance mindset, so that more entrepreneurs and businesses can develop through Growth Institute. In addition, as a leader, he has a high degree of trust that, uh, that he places in his team and partners looking for our improvement. Uh, if you talk to him, he will always leave you with something new to learn. And next we, uh, we have from Edwin. Uh, Daniel is one of the people, uh, one of the world's leading experts on scaling businesses. Uh, he has a very special talent to develop very good working teams and great work culture, as well as being a great human being with great warmth and intelligence. And then lastly, we have from Kent. Uh, I've known and worked with Daniel going eight years now. Uh, for those who don't know, it was Daniel and the Growth Institute that launched the first, uh, very first EXO training course that trained the very first EXO members of our community. Uh, after all this time now, when I think of Daniel, the first thing that comes to mind is his motivation and his drive. He never stops in good times or bad. He's always keeping the success of his team top of mind. He's relentlessly focused when it's time to get something done, but flexible and understanding as a leader. It's been a real pleasure to work with Daniel and to get to know him over time. Thank you, Daniel, for all you do. And so those are just some words uh, from the community. Daniel, welcome to OpenXL Live. How are you doing this hey, afternoon? Uh, super excited to be here. And, and I was not expecting those comments. Thank you, <laughs> um, Edwin. Thank you, uh, Miguel. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, all guys. Really, really appreciate Marite. Um, all right. Thank you. Uh, very, 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 very nice. I, I, I do like to surprise people with those. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's always great to, you know, to... To hear from 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 people with within the community. Now, you of course, as Ken said, have been a part of this community pretty much since the beginning, right? Uh, uh, you know, since since the early days. But do you want to just share uh, to those who are watching, especially those who are fairly new in the community and and those who aren't even part of the OpenEXO community, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and you know and and your journey around EXO as well. So I've uh, been an entrepreneur 23 years, originally from Mexico. I live in Austin now. Uh, I'm in Mexico City today. I'm in my parents' house. Uh, I have a board meeting here tomorrow, so I came a couple of days early. Um, but I, I've been an entrepreneur. I, indeed, I built the first fintech company in Mexico, 1998. Uh, we were the first ones to put online stock quotes and trading online uh, in the market. Got very lucky and successful. We sold the company to an Argentinian company and then raised a bunch of money and, and uh, built the, the biggest uh, financial group company that's ever Latin America. And then we sold it to Santander, um, uh, mm -hmm. was 19, well, 2000, 2001. Um, so saw a lot of fast growth very young. I was in my 20s. Um, and after that, become a lifelong learner and, and a lover of technology, really uh, looking forward to learning more about technology. And when Singularity came up, uh, I was referred to Singularity a lot. I met Peter at a conference uh, one day, and I saw his, indeed, I was part of his launch of his abundance book. Um, mm. I was part of a mastermind of marketers, and Peter went to ask for some help promoting uh, abundance, 
And I was one of the ones that helped me with the launch and had a lot of fun. But I was blown away by Peter. So I said, Peter, where can I learn more from you? And today I'm just building this thing called Singularity University. You have to come. And I was like, next time you have a program on there. So I went to Singularity 2013 or 2012 and met Salim there. And I was just blown away by Singularity. But my third day, I kind of got depressed because you're getting all this knowledge and seeing how the world was going to change. And he said, how am I going to be able to keep up and be able to use all of this in, in my in my companies and how to implement. And I remember I came to Salim and said, hey, Salim, I'm having a hard time because I have no idea how I'm going to catch up with all of this. And Salim laughed and said, Salim style, he laughed and said, yeah, I know. I've been getting these questions a lot. Don't worry. That he kind of gave me some pep talk and some ideas. And then he told me about the book he was writing. It was before the book was published. And I got in love with the, the attributes he was telling me and everything. And I said, hey, can I do a course with you, an uh, online course? And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, whenever you publish a book, you're going to sell your rights to the book, to the publisher. I want to buy your rights to be your partner for online education. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, all education is going to go online. I want to be your partner for online education. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Call me when the book is done, right? And then I heard the book was being published and I emailed him and said, I'm ready. And he was like, okay, come. So the first time we recorded Salim, it was interesting. He was in his apartment in Miami. In the corridor, I flew with my bags and put some lights in his corridor. We didn't have another space to record. And we were recording. And when people came and opened the elevator, we had to kind of shut the camera, get people, and then record again. Um, and we recorded <laughs> course three times now. And today we start the, uh, the first class that Kent teach precisely. Kent has been our partner and the coach mm. that leads the classes. And today, Kent in the morning teach the first class over the third version of the EXO program that we have. Absolutely. And and as Kent always says, they are taking people, you know, you take people even in the first week. So so this link that's scrolling across the bottom of the screen, if we, you, if you, you are class two. Yeah, you can join the class. I mean, if if you are you know interested in in that, you're running a business, you're saying what do I need to do? So, 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 tell us a little bit more about the actual uh, the EXO course. You know what? So, why did you really want to develop it? And then, and then we can speak about the course that's happening now. So, at Upgrowth Institute, um, uh, we help mid market companies do two things: yeah. scale their impact, do what they do in a bigger scale, and reduce the drama of the operation. Yeah. Uh, and we started doing uh, classes with scaling up. Vern Hardish was. He's my mm. co-founder and was the first class that we teach on how to take the four decisions right and scale your company. Yes. And then we say, okay, what are the next problems companies are having? Hiring as an example. And we partner with Brad Smart on top rating. Then we got a class of negotiations with Victoria Medvek. And then we got um, a class of sales with Jack Daly and start getting all the pieces together that you need to scale your company. Yeah. And when we met Salim, we said like, wow, like if you want to scale, you have to become... An EXO. So yes. we said, hey, Salim, this is the perfect course to go as an upsell or, or cross sell after scaling up. Once you mm -hmm. put all the structure in your company and you're running more efficiently, now you need to in include all the technology and all things that Salim talks and really understand yeah. the future. And that was the perfect combination of scaling up. So most of the companies that went through scaling up, then they went through EXO with Salim and started learning with Salim and Kent on how to become an exponential company. And something that we learned interesting, the companies that did scaling up before and had a efficient way of running, when they learned the XO, they were able to use all the XO and take to the next level. Yes. The companies that did not run with scaling up and had a lot of haphazard, let's say, execution, when they implement scaling up, it was like, boom, they, they just could not hold of the power of the uh, methodology. EXO, yeah. it's a really powerful methodology. <laughs> You have to, when you implement it, you have to be ready because it just moves things really, really fast. You have to yeah. have a very, very good execution before you start implementing EXO. I've seen companies that implement EXO and just go crazy on growth, and that creates a lot of stress and drama on the operation. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the and and you you of course were were a, ha, have been a part of quite a few sprints. Um, you know what 
what would you what would you say you know were, were, were a lot of the learnings i mean some of them uh, you know you've you sort of spoken about but but what what potentially were some of the learnings uh you know going through those you know as a coach on on sprints with organizations so uh i was in the one of the first ones interprotection uh that is one of the ones that have to have the strongest results uh and it was amazing because in mexico i was one of the coaches of the core uh business ideas and I was just understanding, I had read the book and the theory, but it was the first time I was really understanding the power of the implementation. Yeah. And I saw the changes. The company just dramatically changed because of the, the sprint. But let me tell you the story of my second sprint that I thought it was very, very powerful. So we, I get assigned my group of six people. I, I was the one that sold it, but I didn't want to be the head coach. I brought uh, another coach. Uh, Andrea Castelli that I thought had more experience mm -hmm. being the lead coach while I brought Andrea. And I said, hey, you lead the coach. I will be one of the coaches on the core. And they assigned me a team and I have a team of five or six people. And one of them was this lady that in the first call, each one introduced each other, kind of understand who was on the team. And this lady said, hey, I'm on accounting. I'm an accounting supervisor in the company. And they said who wanted to come. And I raised my hand. And because I have no idea of technology, this was a software company. I just came yeah. to take the notes and do the PowerPoints for the for the team. And I said, I'm sorry, I just can't do that. Like, mm -hmm. like if you're not going to participate, I just can't accept you. And the lady said, well, I'm in accounting. I have no idea of software or technology. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to help. And I said, hey, let's do a test tonight. And if you pass the test by tomorrow, you're willing to stay. If not, I'm going to ask that you don't come and we bring someone else. And then he said, fine, I'll do whatever you want. I said, do you have kids? And the girl said, yeah, I have these kids. I said, great, what time do your kids go to bed? So around day 30, they're young in their five years or whatever. And I said, do you like to drink something? And the lady said, I love red wine. I was like, perfect. Do you have a red wine bottle in your house? And she said, yes. I said, great. So put your kids to bed at 8.30. At 9, I want you to sit down in your computer with your bottle of wine. And you could not stop surfing until you answer two questions. And I want the answer by tomorrow. But you could not give me the answer in less than three hours of search. And the lady said, oh, what questions? Give me a top three technologies disrupting the software industry. And two, give me a top three startups disrupting the software industry. And she was like, okay. But if I do it in half hour, I don't want you to do it in half hour. I want you to take three hours because I want her to get lost online. Yeah. That night, I went to bed, and around 3 o'clock in the morning, my WhatsApp began blowing up. And I thought someone had an accident or something. So I woke <laughs> up and go to my table where I have my phone, and I turned on the phone, and it was this lady, like 25 WhatsApps, like at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, what, what's going on? And she was blown away. Like, it was six hours. It was 3 o'clock in the morning, and she was still browsing and getting the answers. And she was like, oh, my God, like the world's going to change so much. And he, she was so excited. And she became my best advocate. Because mm -hmm. after that, she got this awake session that we do uh, on the Exo Sprint. And she was awake. So she was one of my best team members, let's say, for that program. But let me tell you what happened three weeks after. I got a call from the CEO and said, Daniel, what are you doing in my company? And I was like, what do you mean? He said, I have these 24 people talking about us and them. And I was like, who do you mean us and them? I said, us, 24, them, the rest of the 500 employees that have no idea the train that is going to hit them in the next couple of years. And yeah. they just sleep. They just don't understand what's going on. And he said, you are working these 24 in a manner that I've never think possible. And after we implemented the sprint, he said, Daniel, the ideas that we got, we found the three ideas, amazing. But the most important thing the sprint is, was awaken my team. He said, you can imagine the change of mentality, perspective, awareness that you brought to a team of 500 companies, sorry, 500 team members. You yeah. started with those 24, but everyone else got updated. His people talking in the corridor at lunchtime, just the mentality of the company is dramatically different. And yes. everything happened because we did an EXO sprint. Yeah, I mean, I, just just as you say that, I like it, it gives me goosebumps, right? And, and seriously, goosebumps. 
Um, yeah, because that's what happens. That's exactly what happens. Yeah, and 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 ultimately, it 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 sort of changes people's lives too, right? Which which you know, I I often get I often get a little bit depressed that I, I come across so many people that just are not so happy with you know what's happening in their daily lives, right? They you know they're in a job where they're just a number and they just do what they have to do and there's not that much innovation and and that's terrible and so when you when you can when you can make that massive change it 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 really is 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 so exciting now nikki has asked a question here on linkedin that just says daniel i'm super interested in your vision on the transition from fintech to defi now i don't know if you have anything to say about that oh uh, um, i love defi i um, hmm. I'm a Bitcoin uh, and, and Ethereum investor. I have not invested in the other currencies because I think there's still going to be a downside. There's, I was in the internet bubble and a lot of the internet companies went under and Amazon was a huge success. I believe Bitcoin mm -hmm. or Ether are going to be that. But yeah, one thing that's important, uh, and by the way, Bitcoin zero of a million, a million. I'm 100% I'm going to be like that. But here's the issue with DeFi. Today, the control of the governments, they control the money. If the government doesn't control the money, the government loses a lot of power. So I think there's going to be a really, really big fight of the governments to control DeFi. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a genie already left the, the bottle. It will not be able to be controlled. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of pain in the middle. Um, yeah. The transition is not going to be easy. I, I will guarantee the transition to DeFi is not going to be easy. You and I, we're going to have to fight and complain and make things aware so we could do the transition faster. But in the process, we will have one or two really complicated economical situations in the world to change to DeFi. But I already believe the train left already the station. You will not yeah. be able to stop DeFi. It's just a no, matter I'm... of when and how long. A hundred percent, and 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 the you know the the whole idea of of Web three, right, and 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 a, a much more decentralized world is 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 very concerning for for governments. Of course, it is, um, be because of 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 the structures that we have in place. Which, as Salim often says, we have a society that's that's not structured for for where we're going, right, um, and. You know, I think this is why we are all quite passionate about about exponential thinking and 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 innovation etc because we really need it for you know for society as a whole right but if you think the companies have a big immune system we haven't really <laughs> seen a government immune system that's going to be a tough one to overcome no uh, uh Absolutely, hundred percent. Now, the the one thing that that you say, uh, Daniel, uh, you know, the, the whole point of 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 Growth Institute, you know, you mentioned less drama. Now, now the the, the one thing that that I have found it working for large companies, small companies, medium sized companies, there's always drama. Um, so, mm. uh, so, so, what is the secret sauce to you know to to actually reducing drama? So um, we believe there are several things. First one is ask who, not what. So whenever you have a problem, instead of saying, what do I have to do? Said, who is the expert on fixing this, on taking care of this? Take care of an opportunity or fixing a problem. As an example, if you said, hey, I want to grow exponentially, who's that person? Salim, right? If I want to scale my company, Bert Harnish. If I want to hire better people, Brad Smart, right? So we try to always understand what problem our company is having and who's the expert. And we go and bring the expert in a class, in a price and format that makes sense for mid-market companies. And then, <coughs> then we ask companies and help them through a deliberate practice to implement the methodology. And here I'll give you a, a quick number. So you and me, uh, this company that sells courses and stuff, people that buy self-taught courses, the average completion rate of a self-taught or, or, or on-demand course, it's around 15%. People that buy a course, just 15%, one five, finish it. 
If you go to the MOOCs, these massive online courses, the completion rate is three to four percent. At Growth Institute, we have 75 percent completion rate because we work with executive and take them through videos, coaching calls, mastermind, everything just to get them on, on track and help them through the process through a deliberate practice to implement what they teach. So we select who is the expert and then we build a program that will help the student go through the process or the executive go through the process and implement in their business. And if you get an implementation and you get a result, you get so excited that you continue implementing new things. So the best way to reduce drama is figuring out what's the best knowledge, technologies, models, whatever, and just follow with an expert the process of implementation. And that's what we do on a sprint. The coaches, yeah. we guide the companies through this awakening and this process of designing companies and, and all that. And the company said, hey, I never thought I could invent four startups or six startups in 10 weeks with my team. And, and that's exactly what happens with Growth Institute. And last thing uh, here, we believe there's a lot of great training and help for startups. And there's a lot of great training and help for big corporations. For the middle, there's nothing. There's this no man's land that mid-market companies are going through and there's no one to help them go through that space. That's where we are. Yeah. And usually companies doing one, two million on the low end, 40, 50 on the high end. And they're trying to define process, uh, grow their team, all these kinds of issues that they have. And we help them improve their systems and processes in every department, hiring, management, leadership, sales, all that. That's exactly what we do. And that's how you reduce drama. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and actually, I mean, the, the, those organizations really are, are, are in a position where they, they actually have, have such an opportunity, you know, versus extremely large corporates in that, in that they, they should be more agile. Do, yeah. do you find though that, that, that there are, you know, organizations that are like, we we can't afford R and D, or like you know we we that's too expensive for whatever, or, or is is that starting to disappear now? You know where people are seeing that you know be, becoming extremely like tech first, digital, etc. Um, you know, I, so I used to find many organizations saying, "Oh, I mean, we don't need to do that. Everything's fine here." So I think it's a mindset issue more than a size issue. We've worked with companies doing two or three million that they have an amazing abundance mindset. Yeah. And then you meet some companies doing 50 million and they have a very limiting mindset. Um, but today, as you said, Kevin, with technology and SaaS companies, and everything, to be able to give them examples or guide them through a process that is cheap and easy to do is much, much faster. Um, I'll give you a, an, an idea of a number. So when we did the first FinTech company in Latin America, we wanted to build a software that we could use in every country we're in operation, a banking software. We spent $24 million building the software and it didn't work. We hired IBM and Pricewaterhouse and they quote us $24 million to build the software. Like in today's mind, it's crazy that you're going to spend $24 million to build software, right? <laughs> you could build an LMS <laughs> banking software for half a million. Uh, or you could buy it off the shelf. You could go to all of these uh, crowdfunding or crowdsourcing uh, places and just have a team of people all over the world to build the software for you. So yeah. today there's a lot of tools and experience to be able to get someone with a limited mindset to change to an abundance mindset. And you have to start reading Salim's book. It's, it's crazy when you read Salim's book. It just opens the mind. Yeah, absolutely. Now... As I said, uh, before we got started chatting, Daniel, I, I said that uh, the time here would just disappear, which it pretty much has. Um, and it's, it, it, it is time to, to call this uh, to an end. And I, I do always, always love ending just, you know, just getting your insights. You know, what is it that, that you'd like to share with the, with the folks that are watching, the folks that are watching the, the recording? Uh, you know, what's the important nugget that they need to know other than read, read, read exponential organizations? <laughs> so if you want to change the mindset uh, of someone, 
uh, I think uh, the EXO methodology is just a great, easy way to open the mind. Uh, I've given lectures of one hour and I've given sprints of 10 weeks. The, yeah. the, the impact, the open of the mind is just crazy. Um, the one thing we need today, and Kevin, you mentioned at the beginning, say, hey, you meet all these people that are in a job that they hate and paycheck by paycheck. And they, like, we're in a very, very limited uh, mindset because most of the world has been limited. And now with technology, it's just opening an abundance of everything. And it's difficult to comprehend. Uh, let me tell you one quick story uh, about Peter Damandis. So when I met Peter 2012 or 11, when he was publishing Abundance, I said, hey, Peter, I will read your book. But like in Mexico, we have a water problem. We don't have an abundance. We don't have an abundance of water. We have a water problem. So I'm sorry, those things are limited. And Peter said, can I ask you some questions? And I'm like, yeah. And he said, how do they, how they call the world? And I was like, the world? No, the blue planet. And I was like, yeah, but it's salty water. He said, yeah, I agree. But let me get two things straight. He said, what percentage of the water, the clean water, it's used by human consumption? Less than 2%. The other 98 is used by factories or uh, irrigation for plants. He said, for factories or plants, you could desalinate water and use it. But the, the infrastructure that we have, ah, and I told him, but it's so expensive to desalinate water. He said, ah, what well, it's expensive is the energy. And you're thinking yeah. with a limited mentality about energy. If you talk yeah. about solar and wind, you have an abundance of energy. So it's not difficult to desalinate the water. Then we have an in infrastructure problem to bring the water from the seas, desalinated to industry or whatever. He said, we don't have a water problem. We have an infrastructure problem. And that's a limited mentality. And if we have energy, we could start changing things. So I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Um, if you start thinking like this and opening one thing by one thing, it's just the mindset is perfect. And you could do way more things if you think like that. Absolutely, Daniel. I, I often say there's one problem in the world and it's, it's the mindsets of people. Because once you can un unlock those mindsets, then the people come up with brilliant ideas to... To unlock all the other problems, but it's it's been fantastic uh, uh, chatting chatting with you. Uh, it's been it's been a while since we actually uh, spoke, so it's re re really great great to chat to you. Um, and enjoy your time in in, in Mexico, and 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 then uh, yeah, in, uh, for the Growth Institute course, all the best. We are really excited about it. I know I, I know Ken's got a lot of work ahead of him, uh, which is which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, and, and we just, all the participants that are on it, we just wish wish them all the best. I did that course. I, I think it was the second one that you ran. Um, so, uh, so yeah, but uh, thanks so much for being here and, and we'll chat to you again soon. Yeah, and we were the first one to accept e EXOs uh, in that yes, course. Yeah, yes. The that's first true. time an EXO was used to pay for something was in a, in a master business course of EXO. I'm proud. It's 100% true. 100% true, okay. Daniel. Thanks so much for being here, Daniel. Bye-bye. So great chatting uh, to Daniel. Daniel Marcos coming coming live from, uh, from Mexico City. Uh, thanks for joining us. We will uh, see you again uh, next week. <laughs>